let's see okay so hello uh internet citizens <laughs> and all the viewers of uh chelem umnyeni uh, lectures uh i'm very glad uh, and pleased to introduce you anton lederer uh, the founder of uh, rotor uh, institute in graz and uh, he will have uh, uh, the lecture uh, named An Archipelago of Growing uh, Knowledge. And uh, he will introduce you the the school of the we, I hope so, the project uh, school of the we. And uh, right now I will uh, pass the, the voice to you and uh, inter uh, introduce you to the lecture. Thank you very much. And uh, if you ha will have uh, any question, uh, you can write it to our uh, YouTube uh, channel to uh, behind the stream, uh, beneath the stream, and uh, I will ask Anton after the lecture. So, thank you very much and enjoy the lecture. And Anton, it's yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, hello and welcome everybody. Um, I'm uh, sorry that. Uh, my picture is overexposed, uh, like uh, in Usti, also here in Graz. Uh, sun is shining and, and, and spring is coming. Um, so this is the reason. Uh, I'm very happy and pleased that I was invited to do this lecture. And uh, it would have been much nicer, of course, to, to come to Usti and uh, do it uh, on site, but uh, very soon I will tell you why I couldn't come. But uh, for now, I will um, share the screen and um, start with uh, the prepared images. So I hope that you all can see that now. Um, this first image that is now visible on my screen at the uh, screen at, la at least. This, what you can see now here, is the building where Rotor Art Center is located in Graz. We are placed in the, in the ground floor of this building. Our art center has about 300 square meters. Square meters, half of this is uh, approximately uh, reserved for the exhibitions and for all kinds of events, and the other half is office storage and, and such things. Just to give you an impression how that art center looks like. Right now, we have an event and an exhibition that just opened uh, last week with starting a new series called Beings and Creatures. Beings and Creatures, that will be a series of exhibitions in four parts or in four chapters, like we call it. And now we started with chapter one that is called On Damaged Earth. And what we parallelly have started in um, the last uh, weeks, uh, is the so-called Office Ukraine with the subtitle Shelter for Ukrainian Artists. As you know now, we face right now a very huge uh, immigration um, uh, wave with uh, people coming from Ukraine. Uh, right now there is uh, about 3.5 million people that already left the country and came to uh, the different European countries also the Czech Republic, as far as I know. And we started here a program with colleagues from Vienna and from Innsbruck um, under this title, Office Ukraine. And the idea is that we take care of artists and art workers and art professionals that escape from Ukraine, from the different uh, cities and areas of the country and uh, want to come to Austria. So we connect those artists and art people with local artists, with the local art scene. We help finding uh, places to stay, apartments for them. And um, at the end, um, uh, we hope that we can provide uh, some stipendiums, some grants to, to those people 
or we can employ some, maybe um, the Austrian Ministry for Culture, um, uh, Art and Culture um, has created a, 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 a grant uh, and, and so the artists, the professional artists coming to Austria, they can apply for that grant that helps them at least uh, for the next three months. Uh, and this activity of the shelter for Ukrainian artists is the very reason that I couldn't make it and I could not come to Usti because uh, this took all our attention in the last uh, weeks. Uh, as you can maybe imagine, we were working day and night and now the, the first artists arrived already in Graz and also uh, the first uh, uh, curator is here. This is a, a colleague of us from the city of Kharkiv from the very east of Ukraine, Nastya Klestova. And uh, Nastya arrived last week and uh, since Monday she is also part of the Graz team of the Office Ukraine and is helping us to structure this and, and communicate with the artists that are still escaping, that are still on the run. Um, a little activity of the Office Ukraine is also a, a postcard series. We started a, a very small uh, project asking um, Ukrainian artists who are on the run, who are outside Ukraine already or who are still in the country to send us uh, some image and we, we uh, print uh, a very simple postcard with that. And that gives us the opportunity to, to, to pay them a, a, a honorarium. So because we understood that many artists also, artists who are still in, in the Ukraine have right now no possibility to, 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 to uh, to earn money and um, so this is a little um, um, thing that we can do in order to, to help them. The image that you can see now is from an artist, uh, her name is uh, Yenya Polosina, uh, uh, the, the, the piece is titled uh, War is Peace and is a quote of the uh, 19 48 of the of the famous uh, novel by George Orwell, 1948. But the project I want to tell you today, and this was actually uh, um, the invitation uh, I followed uh, to, to speak a little bit about projects in relation to, to garden, art and garden. And um, as the Art Center Rotor here in Graz is since years involved in a so-called neighborhood project, we call it a neighborhood project, um, in, in the district where we are based, um, we also did several projects that uh, dealt with, the, uh, with gardening, yeah, with the notion of, of, of garden. And especially in the last year, when we carried out the project titled The School of the V. You see here now on this image, um, a screenshot from our website. On top, you see the, the, the logo of the School of the V. And th this project uh, had got a, a relatively long subtitle. Uh, called an art and cultural project on conviviality. And then it goes on from the Annenviertel neighborhood in Graz to planet Earth. So I think I have to explain that a bit. I mean, an art and cultural project this, uh, is clear on conviviality. And conviviality, this is a term that we really started to use in the, in the last uh, uh, years. And uh, what does it mean? The conviviality is a term coming from uh, countries with uh, um, Rom, Roma, Romani, Roma, 
Roma connected languages like, like France or Spain. And uh, this conviviality is a term for the living together, but in, in a country like France or Spain or in the Latin American uh, countries, especially, this kind of conviviality uh, is a very intense form of, of hospitality, of coming together, of uh, spending time together, um, of uh, yeah, making friends. And um, um, the other term, maybe not uh, so clear in the, in the subtitle, is Annenviertel neighborhood. Annenviertel, this is the district uh, here in, in, in our area. The, the district is called Annenviertel. What you can also see here on this uh, screenshot from the website is that the project was divided basically in two parts. One part was an exhibition that took place in our premises. It started in April last year and lasted till September. So a quite long uh, period for uh, an exhibition. Um, and on the other hand, there was uh, a major part in the public space. Um, here it says, five islands on convivial, of conviviality. So again, using that term conviviality that I spoke about before, and we named the interventions or these installations that we could realize outside um, uh, Rotor. In the public space, we called them islands, islands of conviviality. So islands of coming together, of spending time, and Later on, I think you will you will understand uh, better if I am going into the details and going to explain you your project. Here um, is the front cover and the rear side of a folder that was produced for the for the project. Uh, and on this rear side, you see you can see a map. A map of the district and I wanted to show this to you because you see the different locations. The blue dot, the blue dot in the middle, this is the location of Rotor. In this street is Rotor located and the other five dots, those are the, the sites for the, for the five different interventions. Those uh, interventions took place on relatively small squares. Only one of the squares is a little bit larger, but all of those squares um, are a bit out of, uh, of the focus. So those are places that were not really uh, recognized so much before. And this was one of the of the targets or one of the aims of our project to uh, work with artists on squares, which are there, but not used so much. For the beginning, I would like to, to tell you uh, a bit about the process of preparation and um, uh, conception of the School of the Wii. It took us um, two years to prepare this project. And we started with a large participatory process where we invited many people from the neighborhood, neighbors, uh, but also people from the neighborhood that are experts in different fields. To, to come by and take part in um, uh, round tables, or we, we called it, um, um, so the English term would be a think tank. Um, and um, uh, we invited those neighbors uh, to bring in their expert expertises um, uh, during the development process of the project. Uh, what you can see on this photograph 
is, uh, of course, a pre-pandemia, pre-corona situation when a group of people met in the gallery um, in order to, to, to discuss, to talk, to share knowledge and experiences. But in between, we always made with those people some exercises, some body exercises in, um, with the idea to share different uh, experiences and um, um, to make these exercises and afterwards to continue uh, uh, the discussion. This exercise that you can see here, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a well-known one and, and it, it has got the title, it has got the name Sitting Circle. So here are maybe about 10 people in a circle and they, all have to sit down in the same moment and then the sitting circle works. So it um, has to do um, with, um, with responsibility and trust also. Yeah, you have to, to trust the others that they all uh, sit in the same time and only when, when, when the collective uh, is doing it together, then the sitting circle will be a success. On this photograph, you can see a similar group, maybe not the same one. It was taken, the photo I think was taken on a different day. But those are, are, are people uh, also from, from, from the area. I can see here uh, uh, some social workers. I can see people working in the field of migration. Um, uh, there is one uh, man who is owner of a restaurant. Uh, there is a, a doctor here. Uh, then um, some skateboard activist. Uh, yeah, and and uh, a, a pupil from a school next door. So different people, and with with this group we we were discussing uh, the the hot topics of the area. So what is uh, concerning the people, what should be done, what's going well. And, and um, to prepare this discussion, um, these discussions and these uh, um, think tanks, um, we had a cultural anthropologue in our team and this uh, lady, um, was preparing mind maps. You can see here such a map uh, um, ready for the participants of these think tanks to um, yeah, come up with their own ideas, to, to do some sketches or um, extend the information that is already given in that, in that uh, little plan, in this uh, drawing. Well, this process of, of communication with neighbors um, uh, took uh, quite uh, some time. We collected uh, various informations, included artists also already in these uh, meetings. And then finally, with a delay of one year because of the outbreak of the uh, Corona pandemia, we could start the, the project in April 2021. It was planned for April 2020, but you all remember in March 2020, the pandemic started and it was for us very soon clear that uh, we cannot uh, start with uh, the school of the V. But in April 21, it was uh, everything uh, ready then and Firstly, I would like to show you two projects, two artistic projects that were shown indoor, just for your, for your better understanding and maybe also uh, to give you an idea how the indoor projects and the outdoor projects were uh, related to each other. 
So this is the entrance room of, of Roto that you can see now. And um, uh, we invited uh, a, an artist duo, Katrine Grau and Zoe Gray. They are both based in uh, the North America and um, could not come over in April last year to prepare their project on site because of the um, various regulations of the limitations in, in the different countries. But uh, uh, Katrine Grau and Zoe Gray, they uh, managed uh, very good to prepare everything from the distance. In the center of their installation, there was a, a clay pit. You can see it on the image on the floor. There is um, uh, some uh, yeah hundred some hundred kilograms of clay on the floor, fresh clay, and the visitors they were invited to take this clay and uh, create an, a vessel. So this was the. Uh, invitation from from uh, Katrine and Zoe um, to ask the the visitors to create a vessel um, related to their feeling in the moment when they do it. So the, the visitors were asked to 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 create this clay object without thinking too much. Uh, just uh, 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 proceeding, just doing it and listening to their to their body and to their uh, inner feelings. On this photograph, you can see a young uh, uh, woman uh, doing such a vessel, um, taking out that fresh fresh uh, clay and and yeah just uh, um, uh, preparing uh, this object. This photograph was taken at the end of the project. Um, uh, it shows one side of the room. And you can see that this um, furniture in the, in the room is, is, is very crowded. Uh, many, many people uh, uh, took part. I'm, I try to fade this out a little bit, fade in, fade in a little bit so that you can see there are many, many different uh, objects. Altogether, there were some, some uh, seven to eight hundred uh, little vessels uh, done. Um, here are some details. You can see that uh, people really start, did it very differently um, according to their skills or their knowledge about uh, clay, how to how to work with clay, and about yeah how spontaneous spontaneous you are able able to do such a thing. Then uh, as I will start with the second room. Also from inside, from, from, from the exhibition. Um, this is a room created by a Graz-based artist, Daniela Brasil, and uh, some of her friends. So she decided to invite uh, five or six uh, artists she is really related with um, to contribute in that uh, uh, room that she called the study cabinet of Professor Ogede Ewe Eko. So it's a study cabinet of, of, of this professor. And this professor is not a person, but it is a plant. On this photograph, we can't see that plant because it's um, almost located there where the photo is taken from, from this position. But um, Daniela Brazil is working in this project a lot about the relation between 
human beings and other uh, uh, species. And in this case, she, she uh, made the, the plant that she borrowed from the, from the uh, local botanical garden here in, in Graz. It was actually a huge banana plant. And this huge banana plant uh, 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 was appointed to be the Professor Ogede Ewe Eko. And uh, all the objects and other plants um, are related to, to this uh, personification of that plant. In this, in this uh, study cabinet, the visitors could also do some kind of exercises. This was a, a, a very crucial, a basic idea of, of the entire exhibition, that the visitors are involved, that they uh, can become active themselves in, 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 in every room, in every of our uh, uh, rooms, they could uh, interact uh, with uh, the installations. And uh, here we can see one of the possibilities to interact. There was a table prepared with a special ink made of a plant. Um, um, this is a little uh, blue, uh, um, a little blue uh, plant. And um, from that one, we, we created ourselves every, every week or every second week uh, a new uh, ink. And with this ink, visitors were invited to write a letter to the professor, to the banana tree professor, if you want. And those letters were collected in a box and um, sometimes People took, uh, took it with them at home, but, but some of them really uh, wrote this letter and left it in, 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 in the gallery space to become a part of, of that exhibition and of that project. So what uh, uh, you maybe can, can feel already that the entire project is very much uh, connected to, to the idea of participation already in the, in the, in the, in the um, project of conception, in the, during the conception of, of the School of the V, participation and involving of people was uh, really important, was crucial. And uh, when the whole project was over, we uh, were asked um, from one of the funds that or the main fund that gave us the money for this project, we were asked to calculate how many people were involved. And we figured out that in the conception and preparation of the project and the different artistic uh, modules, uh, around 400 people were involved. So a really large number of people that uh, was uh, connected to, to this uh, project and the idea of the school of the bee. Now let me see um, just a little look on the on the watch okay five o'clock then it's a good time to go over to the public space activities. In the in the last uh, uh, 15 minutes I was uh, trying to present you some of the artistic works and maybe ideas behind uh, uh, the, the project School of the V in the interior. And now I will continue with three works that were realized outside in the public space, in the public re re realm. So the first one was conceived by the artist Nikolai Olenikov, who is mainly based in St. Petersburg in Russia, but um, is uh, traveling around a lot and has uh, one of his uh, bases in south of Italy, in the, in the city of Lecce, um, where uh, he is involved 
in in a, in a long term uh, project there. Um, and in in Graz, he realized in the frame of the school of the V, one of these five islands of conviviality. If you remember in the beginning, I spoke about this uh, notion of conviviality, this living together. And uh, uh, one of these, what we then called island of conviviality was created by Nikolai Olenikov on a square, which is located in front of a school. So you can see in the background of this photograph, the building that is a school uh, with uh, some hundred uh, pupils inside. And uh, this object was created just in front of the school and also uh, in involving the pupils in the procedure. Uh, soon you will see uh, a photo showing uh, some of the, of the pupils also in, 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 in action. But I would like to continue to talk a little bit about this image here. Maybe you can see it on the photograph, but I want to point it out that on this uh, particular, particular, on this particular little square, there are three trees. Um, actually, I don't know if this is the same uh, word in English, the same term in English, uh, in, in German language, these trees are called Platanen. I think in Czech Republic, Czech uh, language, it will be more or less the same. These Platans are uh, beautiful trees. They become really huge when they are old. And on this square, we have uh, three platans in different ages. And uh, Nikolai was involving those trees in his installation, uh, at least two of the trees. You can see that uh, one of the ob objects um, uh, is uh, almost surrounding the, 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 the smaller tree. And this is connected to the observation that those trees are really uh, very important places for the birds. There are many, many birds uh, settling uh, on these trees and uh, they are uh, sitting on that trees during the day and in the night. But this is an observation that, uh, um, yeah, is, was, not for everyone frequenting that uh, square, it is, it is kind of visible or the, the people don't, don't, note, don't take a notice about it, that there are uh, in the middle of the, of the city, it's a very, uh, yeah, it's not far away from the real center of the city, there are uh, lots of birds living on that trees. This is a, a photograph, uh, another photograph from, from, from the other side, so from the side of the school. And this was taken during the finalization of the, of the installation. You can see a couple of young people uh, in the background in the, in the blue shirt. This is Nikolai uh, Olenikov uh, doing something uh, to finish um, um, the object. And on the right hand in the foreground, there is a Graz-based composer, Christian Schiller, who uh, uh, created a sound installation, an audio installation that was um, uh, located inside that object. The audio, the audio installation, and maybe it's good now to show you the next image. Uh, I will, I will continue to talk about the audio installation soon, but on that image, you can see um, six pupils from that school together with the teacher during a birds workshop. So I told you already that Nikolai Olenikov had that observation that on these trees, uh, many birds are living and he dedicated his work uh, to those trees. He called the installation the Red Birds Social Club. 
In fact, he made a mixture of English and German language. He called it Red Birds Social Club. So it was a playing also with different languages. Because at the end, the, the installation itself was very much about, about language, about different languages, and especially about the language or languages of the birds. He created the idea for pupils of the school to experience themselves in bird language. So to talk like birds, or let's say to sing like birds. And there were a number of birds singing workshops or experiences uh, done in the school. And those um, workshops were recorded. So the pupils, when they started to uh, sing like birds, to communicate like birds, those communications were, were recorded. And the composer that I mentioned before, and you can see him again on this photograph, he took that audio files with the singing like birds, children, the pupils, and uh, made a, a, a composition out of it. And this composition uh, was placed inside the object. And from time to time, I think uh, all three, four or five minutes, uh, uh, one of these uh, audio tracks uh, could be could be heard. So the all this installation on that square was circling around this notion of the birds of uh, uh, and the relation of of uh, between birds and human beings. Here you can see a, a young woman uh, during another workshop where people coming to the square were invited to transform themselves with little interventions into birds or uh, to show kind of um, uh, relation, their relation to the birds. So she was doing it very simply here with some feathers but uh, preparing with the hot glue gun uh, some other object. Or uh, here on this photograph, you also can see uh, this, uh, yeah, let's call it an tr easy transformation. So on the left uh, side, the, the, the lady is, uh, she was uh, one uh, of the main people doing that workshop. It's again, uh, Daniela Brasil. She had uh, this blue room installation inside, if you remember. And uh, she was uh, um, um, taking part in this uh, birds workshop and is on the way to, to transform this man in the center of the photograph into a bird with a few little interventions. So you can see she placed a first feather behind his glasses and uh, maybe later on it continued with some uh, uh, color in his face. I, I can't remember what, 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 what actually happened. All right, so this uh, was now the first of the, of the three interventions I wanted to bring you in touch with. Um, that one from, from Nikolai Olenikov called Birds, Red Birds Social Club or Social Club involving those young people, those pupils and their voices acting like birds. And um, the entire installation was circling around this uh, idea of relation, of this relation between human beings and birds.
now I uh, opened the first photograph of the second um, second work, the second installation. Mm, it was done by an art group based in Belgrade, in Serbia. The name of that group is Mini Pogon, and they called their piece Arbeitsarena. What uh, means Arbeit? This is uh, Arbeit is uh, labor, so it's an arena uh, to uh, for for the issues of labor, and. Um, you, you see that they designed on that square uh, a number of objects. Like the other one uh, before, um, uh, made for, for, for use so that you can sit on it, that you can um, sleep if you want on it, that you can meet friends, um, make a picnic or... Uh, whatever and in that case this uh, arena was uh, 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 created in that form to be a kind of open air classroom um, I think yeah on that next photograph you can see uh, the arena from the other side and uh, the person in in the center, Maybe I can open it a bit, zoom in. So the person in the center is actually a teacher and in her back, behind her, on one of these elements of that arena, you see there is a blackboard. And this teacher was holding in that moment uh, her classes in the public space under open air. Uh, she is a teacher uh, working for an NGO that is located on the square also. The name of this NGO is Danaida and it's an, it's an NGO working only with women and giving a basic education to that women, giving um, German courses and uh, for some of the women also uh, alphabetization. There is this uh, part living in, in our society of people that are illiterate, that cannot uh, write and read. And Danaida is uh, the, the organization in town to uh, uh, work with alphabetization, the problem of alphabetization. In, in this case, it's, a, it's a, a German course, a German course of a very basic level, I think the lowest level. And this opened the possibility also that the artists from Belgrade took part. So in this case, you can see in the, in the center also there, yeah, showing us his back, there is a man sitting. And this man is not member of the, of the course because it's only for women, but is one of the artists. And in this public space situation, uh, he and the other artists could, could participate in that, uh, in that German course. This open school class was very, a very good idea, especially for these times of the ongoing pandemia. The organization like Danaida, but also others from the neighborhood, they were really uh, um, happily accepting these uh, uh, objects because they immediately understood that this gives the possibility to go out, to take off the masks, and breathe and have a different kind of, of, um, of uh, educational setting. Um, let's see what else we have. Ah, yeah, here on one of these panels, on one of these modules, there was uh, a calendar 
that opened the possibility for people to um, to note or reserve the yeah to reserve the, the the arena to reserve the space for their events. So you see that object was inaugurated in the last part of May, and then it was uh, um, installed in June, July, August, September, and also half of October. And um, this is another photograph, also taken on the same uh, square during a gathering um, of, um, of an interest group of unemployed people. Remember that the entire installation is dedicate, dedicated to the notion of labor. It's called Arbeitsarena and the labor and all the issues around labor are uh, in the center of, of uh, the idea. And the artists from Belgrade, the mini pogon group together with Rotor invited different uh, people from this broad field of labor to come to the square to discuss their issues, um, those issues uh, um, that uh, they are concerned with. And uh, uh, from all these debates, a local radio station, uh, independent radio station uh, from Graz created some radio broadcasts. Uh, in this case, uh, 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 these unemployed uh, members of that unemployed uh, interest group, pressure group, um, they were preparing a little uh, theater piece, a little performance. And uh, this is the moment when, when this little performance um, starts or is on the way to start very soon. On During the time of this um, performances or debates, um, there was always uh, audio equipment on site. So here you can see there is uh, one of the, of the loudspeakers and um, a tuner, uh, everything was there to give a voice, to give a voice to these different topics, to the people like these uh, unemployed activists or activists from that unemployed organization. So let's see. This is another photograph uh, taken uh, on that square um, uh, in a moment when this installation uh, was used for, a, again, a workshop with women. And it was again about uh, about uh, letters and words and this uh, problem of uh, alphabetization. Uh, uh, a local artist from Graz came along with uh, uh, boxes of different letters and made a print workshop. The idea was that uh, those ladies uh, taking part in that workshop you use that letters that they are most of them are not familiar with because they come from from countries where they use uh, different alphabets like Arabic or uh, um, um, some uh, Farsi uh, alphabet or uh, or some others, yeah, like Cyrillic. Yeah, so. Uh, to 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 get familiar with the with the Latin alphabet or to more or, or, or see it from a different perspective, maybe the artist uh, um, come up came up with that idea to use the letters uh, to create pictures, not really working on, on on words or sentences or meaning, but to use those letters in order to to create. Uh, pictures. It was a, a printing workshop uh, with, with different uh, sizes and forms of, of letters. Ooh. 
Okay, I'm coming now to the third. Um, and this is the last uh, um, public space intervention and project I would like to introduce to you. This is the project that was realized by the uh, artist Eliana Otter. Eliana Otter is an artist um, from Peru and she is based uh, uh, currently, let's say, part-time in Lima in Peru, but part-time also in Austria, in Vienna, where she is uh, writing uh, her PhD at the Academy of Fine Arts. And Eliana Otta uh, in introduced to that third square um, the so-called Garden of Nurturing Knowledges. This is also uh, where the title for my lecture was taken from a little bit, uh, from this notion, notion of uh, nurturing knowledges. I uh, uh, used it in a different way, a little bit simplified, the, the growing knowledges. So first of all, uh, that was important for Eliana to make clear from the, from the beginning on that there is not only one uh, truth or one knowledge, we are speaking about, about uh, multiplied knowledges, about uh, several knowledges. Uh, so there is not a single person that knows how to do it. Um, this school of the we and this form of togetherness and coming together is very much uh, uh, driven by the idea that the various experiences and the various knowledges, if they come together, then something uh, uh, new can uh, develop or will develop. And the garden of the nurturing knowledges was uh, based, uh, uh -huh, here uh, there is another, um, uh, view on that garden. Again, it was designed as a platform or in the other uh, uh, term used as island of conviviality, this island of, of coming together. And uh, 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 what I wanted to, to point out on this picture, um, the objects that were used to to, to, to put the plants in, the, the pots, let's say, or plastic uh, uh, vessels, they were all donated. They were donated from, from, um, um, from farmers uh, having every day from Monday to Saturday a, a market, a farmer's market on that square. We can't see the location of the market on this picture, but um, there are two people standing behind here on the on the on the corner of this uh, picture, and right from that location would, would be that market during during the morning. And uh, Eliana Otta uh, invited uh, the farmers with. Uh, nicely made card. So this is the, 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 the cover, the front side of that card. She asked the farmers, um, do you have some of these objects that you can see here on this card or some others at your farms that you don't need anymore, that are out of use? So please bring them along and we will include those objects in, in this uh, uh, island in this garden of uh, the nurturing knowledges. And um, the other days, uh, many of those farmers came along uh, with boxes, with old rubber boots, with buckets, with um, uh, this plastic uh, vessel here in the front and so on and so on. And these various objects then gave uh, uh, the possibility to, to put plants in. 
this is again from, from another perspective. And after uh, several weeks passed, um, maybe you can, you can see the difference from the photo before. The plants uh, uh, are here much bigger already. They were, they were, they were growing. Um, also the plants, most, the majority of the plants that you can see here on these pictures are again donations. This was a second call that the artist did here, in, but not um, only, uh, in this case, she was not only asking the farmers, but also in general, the neighbors around, if they would like to take part in this project and come along with, with a plant or some plants. And this is what many neighbors uh, actually did. They, they really liked that idea of having a, 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 a common garden that is completely free, uh, accessible for everyone. And everyone is invited to take care. Um, I, I'm jumping back to this uh, image because I want to stress out um, what is written on this board here. Yeah? It says, uh, we are taking care about each other uh, or how we are taking care about each other and all the beings around us. Yeah? So the, the notion of caretaking and how uh, do we take care about the others, about the beings, about the other humans, but also about the public space in general and who takes care and who is responsible. This was a main uh, question raised by, by Eliana Otto's uh, Garden of Nurturing Knowledges. And here on this photograph, you can see uh, a neighbor taking care. And this is a funny photo because it was taken in the middle of the night, maybe three o'clock. Um, when uh, a neighbor on the way home from some party maybe or from uh, whatever uh, watering the flowers yeah so this is uh, a, a situation that that happened uh, uh, often that people felt this responsibility for that piece of garden that they uh, uh, looked after the plants and maintained the, the whole thing. The Garden for Nurturing Knowledges, like the other, um, um, like the other islands of conviviality was also used for, for various events. In this case, it's a, 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 a breakfast, it's a morning breakfast, or let's say a brunch maybe, organized by a women's center called Frauenservice Graz. So the Women's Center Graz, that is an organization yeah, helping women in need. Uh, to, and, and from time to time, they are uh, organizing that public breakfasts. And uh, as the, their, their office or their or, uh, yeah, institution is, is really only a few meters away from that place. They were really absolutely happy to, to use um, this uh, garden of nurturing knowledges for their events. And this was another event taking place uh, here. Um, uh, rather at the end of the, of the installation period. In this case, we, we invited a, a local artist. He calls himself Ila. And uh, this uh, guy is uh, kind of uh, uh, modern uh, sh shamanic man, if you want, uh, and uh, dealing a lot with fire and uh, rituals. But in this case, he was uh, preparing something really easy, um, a public uh, fireplace. He installed a fireplace. You can see this fireplace here in the foreground. And uh, on a Saturday morning when the market, uh, farmer's market was really busy, he prepared simply pancakes. 
So he was sitting there and uh, preparing on, on the open fire these pancakes. And this is, seems to be nothing spectacular, but uh, in a regulated country like Austria and in a, in a city like Graz, where everything is very, very determined, to have an uh, open fire in the middle of the city and sitting there and cooking on this open fire is uh, something unexpected and, and he was playing with this uh, very simple unexpected uh, intervention. Yeah, you see the, the, the plants in the, in the Garden of Nurturing Knowledges uh, uh, were really uh, growing well, even in that uh, small uh, rubber boot here. Um, that was uh, really beautiful to see. So I see that uh, time now uh, uh, was passing, uh, is, is passing. Um, maybe for the last uh, 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 two, three minutes, I just wanted to stress out uh, some of the, of the source uh, um, books that we were using to uh, uh, prepare the project content-wise. So uh, the first one I, I'm showing to you here is from Edouard Glissant, who was a philosopher and a writer from the Caribbean, from Martinique. And um, um, this book is called uh, Poetics of Relation. And uh, it is about uh, the, the uh, 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 the, the theory about uh, the relation um, uh, between those islands, but also uh, in general, uh, the, the relational thinking between uh, beings. That was a very important source uh, for us, these um, writings by Edouard Clisson. And uh, the other one um, is a, a writer that was, um, uh, very well received in the 1970s, um, Ivan Illich, uh, with his uh, major book, uh, Deschooling Society. Also on the, on the cover of, of this book here, you can see that the Deschooling uh, book is, is mentioned. The, this was a very influential uh, uh, book uh, and this uh, in the last years uh, again received a lot. And, uh, but we were referring to, to, to that book uh, here, these uh, tools for conviviality. And remember that I, in the beginning I was talking about that notion of conviviality. And uh, Ivan Illich was the one uh, in the 1970s to bring in this term of conviviality into the discourse. Picking it up from, from Latin America where he was uh, 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 living and, and, and researching uh, uh, a lot and, and for some years. So the conviviality into the, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, philosophical discourse was, was, in, in, was uh, brought up by, by Ivan Illich. And uh, the last book that I would like to show, and this is also the end of the presentation now, is, uh, uh, was edited by Alessandra Pomarico. And uh, uh, she is an Italian um, pedagogue, alternative pedagogue, but also a curator and theoretician uh, based in, in, in south of Italy and in New York. And uh, 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 with her theories around the radical pedagogy uh, and uh, uh, anthology like that book here, Pedagogy Otherwise, um, she was also a very influential uh, to our uh, project, to the School of the V. And in her case, she was even a co-creator from the beginning on. So there was a small core team of uh, uh, four or five, four people 
in the in the in the in the in the first conceptual team of the project and alessandra uh, she was was one of that uh, persons uh, to to define uh, the project from the beginning so this is now the end of my presentation and i hope that um, yeah it was somehow interesting for you and again thank you for the possibility to take part in this uh, lecture series. So, hello, thank you. Thank you very much for insight to the project. Uh, unfortunately, there's no question uh, in the chat, but uh, my question is uh, if, the, if that program will uh, be this year again or some, somehow uh, continues. Well, this um, the school of the V in that uh, shape, uh, like I presented it uh, or a part of it uh, to you now, was uh, happening in 2021, and it was uh, a relatively large project. So we needed uh, extra funding for that. And yeah, you you, to you told us that uh, you prepared it for two years. Yes, uh, we prepared it for quite some long time, for, for quite some time, and 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 we had the funding to to do the project. So um, this year uh, we only do something uh, relatively small, but somehow this idea of offering space in the public okay. space for the people, for the neighbors. Uh, this this idea continues, and also with the with the with gardening, uh, we are we are still uh, um, involved. So yeah, very, very nice. And uh, the last question: um, How people are from community, from the locals? How they reacted? Uh, they are are they open to next uh, next like a uh, islands? Yes, like that. So the the. the majority of the of of the of the people i think were very happy about these uh, uh, islands because they immediately understood that this is a very offer for them yeah it was made for the people um as a reaction of this pandemic situation when inside it was very hard to meet and everyone uh, was using more intense than ever before the public space and to be safe, you know, when when you meet yeah. and 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 I think that the, this was uh, uh, yeah without explaining it too much, every it was clear that 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 it was made for the people, and and many many people were very sad when we had to take it down after yeah. um, uh, sure. after summer yeah in October, sure. so many people said ah will you do it again next year and this and that but. This is, I mean, we have somehow, and this is the hope that that we have with a project like this, that um, we can uh, come up with some ideas, we can implement an idea, in this case, how to use the public space in a different way. Uh, and and uh, as it was a very strong uh, project and, and really received very positive, uh, I think it will have a long, uh, term impact so okay. people will remember this um, and and uh, somehow uh, in the moment when they miss it they will yeah something will stay yeah and, yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very looking forward in the next years how how this uh, uh, project for one summer how this will will influence the people's understanding of the public space. Okay, sure. And as I, I suppose if uh, the locals uh, liked it, uh, so city council and city um, the, um, the leaders of the city, they will, yeah. they will be open for next uh, events there. Hopefully. Yeah, um, I mean, yes. Um... I mean, we 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 had now a, a, a very drastic political change in our city to to to, to the better, I would say. So the conservative and right wing uh, government that we had before is now gone, and we have now a very left. Hmm? 
Congratulations. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We have now a very leftist uh, government and I think uh, now everything is becoming a bit easier mm -hmm. uh, because the leftist, uh, the, 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 the right, the right and right wing, uh, they, they have this idea of the public space that it should be clean, that it should be uh, 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 free of um, um, people that they don't want to see in the society, yeah? the poor people, the beggars, the homeless, all, all, all those people. Yeah? And, and our, uh, our project didn't make a difference, you know, it was open for everyone. And on that nurturing garden, for example, there was a time in summer, three or four weeks, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when a homeless man was living there, mm -hmm. he was really uh, sleeping and living there with 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 his uh, things for for some weeks. Yeah, and it was interesting to see that the island was big enough that there was space for him to have a place. It was warm; it was not raining, so he could sleep outside. And him living and sleeping there was not a reason for the other people to sit on the other corner, you know? Yeah. So there were, uh, I saw a situation when, when the man was still sleeping in, in the morning and a kindergarten group with kindergarten kids mm -hmm. came and was also sitting on the, on the, on the island and, and, and eating some uh, apples, you know? So, and this is a situation that normally doesn't happen in a city because that uh, other parts or this um, um, uh, mar marginalized parts of the society, they, they, especially this conservative and right wing, they try to, I don't know, make them invisible. And, and here it was, yeah. That, oh, but, but that was also uh, on in our intention, yeah, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to make people understand that yeah. A public space is actually for everybody, and and if we manage to create uh, it in a way um, that that can work, you know that these these people are together without yeah. uh, fear or without uh, having major problems with each yeah. other. Yeah, they they are but, aware that they are they are all uh, part of the society. They are all part of the society, but. There were problems also with this. Uh, um, uh, this. So, what I am explaining now sounds really like paradise, but it was <laughs> not always. Yeah, uh, one of the of the problems, and this was a problem for the people living uh, next door, was that those islands were also used for parties. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, of course, if you live there and then you have in front of the door such a, a thing and then every second day people are coming along in the night with uh, ghetto plasters and uh, a lot of beer <laughs> you're yeah, not sure. happy yeah so yeah yeah uh, this is a matter of of uh, yeah constant ne negotiation also in the mm. public space that you have to to, to to tell those party people, okay, it's okay if you celebrate this and that, but you know, after a certain know, time, yeah, certain time, you should respect also yeah. the, the the neighbors. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, thank you very much for for insight. <laughs> Welcome, so, thank you for for the possibility. Very much. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I hope uh, you will uh, work along with uh, the great jobs uh, and, uh, and then other uh, islands they will you will create <laughs> with the <Yes>. artists. <laughs> so okay. thank you very much and bye bye. Hope to, to see you in, in person somewhere in Ustia <laughs> when I'm coming. Yeah. Okay.